have done research globally in Latin America, in Asia Pacific region, when we see that women borrowers feel uh, it is much easier and convenient for them to apply for a loan online, right, rather than going to a bank. They feel they're less prejudiced, less judged against, and they can provide all the data uh, through, uh, you know, through mobile phone, right, which is much more accessible than working miles and miles going to a, a bank branch. And we also think uh, from this from the survey and from our report, the fintechs are offering more women talent financial products or services. For example, uh, a, a financial literacy campaign, a mini drama series, or audio clips right, with fictional character, right, showing you how to open a digital wallet and how to apply for a credit. Micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises are facing persistent funding gap in many parts of the world, in both advanced economies, but also in emerging markets and developing countries. And that funding gap is immense, it's considerable, it's both in debt, but also in equity. Uh, one of the reasons is the traditional banking sector, right, do not have effective way to uh, to do the credit scoring right, of a small media enterprises is cost too much and they may not have all the adequate financial information right, to ascertain the credit worthiness of a small business who may have a very short trading history, may have a lower headcount, right, who may not have the robust financial reporting that banks uh, are used to from a larger enterprises. Women entrepreneurs, um, they feel sometimes quite challenging, right, to um, to raise funding from a still very much male-dominated 
um, sector, right, in terms of annual investors or VCs, right. So, but by uh, soliciting uh, your capital investment directly from the crowd, right, often through online platforms, I think women can feel being empowered and liberated uh, to uh, to to seek for the capital that is essential for their business growth. In the UK, right, around 12% of all early stage seed and early stage uh, venture funding are now uh, being channeled through online equity crowdfunding platform. I will see great many examples, examples of women entrepreneurs uh, getting uh, the venture funding that ne they need to expand their business. We wanted to make sure that AI is aligned to our values, to our democratic values and principles. We want to make sure that AI is developed in a safe, in a transparent way, and that would ultimately lead to more trust in society. We need to be thinking, uh, are societies protected enough? Are our institutions prepared enough uh, for all the possible threats that are out there? And we believe that there might be threats coming from some of the technologies that are currently available, both to be used for productive purposes, but also malicious actors can make use of them.
What more the EU AI Act does is to make sure we put for the first time some um, guardrails for general purpose AI models. And we do that in a two tier approach. So there are some companies that are larger, bigger, um, that are used much more uh, than others that have bigger computational power that will have to go uh, through more obligations. But we have left the opportunity for those that are just starting their journey uh, in the generative AI world um, to, uh, you know, obey less obligations. So they have a little bit more flexibility and they can continue with their innovative processes.